Welcome back to LCS Summer 2024. We are in the middle of Energy versus 100 Thieves in this best of three, and the Thieves started off swinging. Absolutely awesome game number one from them. I think it's pretty easy to say Quid was the highlight of the show. Yeah, yep. ab absolutely. And I think, again, when we're talking about success for both of these teams, it has been creativity around their solo laners. And we saw that already in game one uh, from Quid. It opens up another option in that mid lane pool for AP junglers that we've been talking about, Kobe. So I'm really curious to see because best of threes, draft adaptation. Exactly. Hell yeah. We get to see some adaptations here. Energy get to reconsider their life choices around Baron. <laughs> yeah, um, they should do that. And, and some uh, of the, the, the commitments that they've made or or have not made. I would also say <laughs> one, of, one of the big things to bring up too, although Quid did end up like stealing the show there, I would say 100 Thieves bottom lane absolutely gapped mm -hmm. the energy bottom oh, yeah. lane. Absolutely gapped them. And this is Meech and Ayla. This is one of the least hyped up bottom lanes in the LCS. Whenever people are talking about, oh, rookie of the split and rookie of the year, and everyone mentions Sniper on the team, nobody talks about Meech. And uh, FBI was looking quite rusty there, who he gave up the really early kill as well. So uh, the bottom lane for 100 Thieves, I think, doing way more work than people would have predicted coming into the series. And I think that jungle was a pretty big gap as well. Honestly, the only role that wasn't a massive gap was top. And it's kind of hard to gap your opponent when he's Twisted Fate and your oh, cards at your head. A, a lizard. <laughs> like, it's just not going to end up being one of those matchups you can just dominate. But let's go ahead and get into our second draft here. As Energy are, uh, they learned their lesson from game number one, their first ban. They are not going to allow Quid to play that Ezreal again. They're also banning out the Vi with 100 Thieves taking Rumble off the table. Skarner, there's your red side tax. Yeah, unfortunately, you kind of have to ban Skarner red side unless you want to let it through and have answers like the Rumble or as we've seen in LPL, uh, the Mordekaiser, um, which we saw banned uh, yesterday. Um, and then taking the Vi away from River again. <laughs> River is just such a great jungler on that pick, able to sync up with Quid specifically. And then yep. the Nautilus ban coming through. Um, Nautilus is obviously a really strong, uh, like engaged support that we've seen coming out of the bot lane now that has gone towards tankier engaged supports. And Ayla, as you already pointed out, 100 Thieves bot lane had a great series and it really started from level one with the Nautilus. Oh yeah. All right, so if you're energy, what are you gonna change this time around? Obviously things kind of fell apart pretty quickly in the previous game. They did have that moment where it looked like they might have been able to bring it back, you know, where they found the fight after ending up losing in mid. But hey, here's Nidalee in the jungle. And Contracts is a long time Nidalee in Jar. He loves playing this champion. This is one of the most aggressive jungle matchups that you can get. Uh, Want to see what you pair it with though, because Nidalee with winning lanes is very different from Nidalee with a bunch of losing lanes. Yup. And and having that priority is incredibly mm -hmm. important as well. There are a lot of AD mid lane options that we have mentioned, but Nidalee also greatly benefits from things like the Renekton, obviously, with the point and click stun uh, that is up and available yet again. So could be another Renekton run back with the guaranteed combo here uh, with Nidalee covering the Ivern, but I don't think that's going to get lost. No. No. Uh, you but, you but, cannot, there's not that much wiggle room with a Nidalee, yeah. so. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see if Talia comes through, only because I'd be expecting more of the Corky. Yep, um, yeah. we're going to do the Corky Trist trade, um, which obviously if you have these kind of farming AP junglers, you really do want um, an AD mid, and Corky is incredibly strong, incredibly strong poke that can come out of that champion, and so we are setting up a poke composition. All right, now with the poke composition, they need CC. Let's see what they decide to go with here. Top lane, they're going to keep for the second round. And so they lock in the defense first, the yeah. Braum pick. This is actually one of my favorite picks, and especially when you're already showing a Leona that is one of these one-way ticket mm -hmm. supports that is yeah. an, an all-in engage. You've got some good defense here for your long-range poke and your Nidalee sustain later on. Really rounds out your team fight. Braum, I think, is really underrated by a lot of teams. 
uh, with everybody looking towards these engaged supports. Right, he's such a good counter engager, right? His, he's so adept at protecting his own team when you're trying to full send, but it looks like Jinx Leona is going to be the bottom lane here this time around for 100 Thieves. Yeah, this is a really interesting, slightly different look from 100 Thieves, and we're gonna be looking to see what they end up doing with their top side. I assume they're going to be saving R5 for Sniper, um, and we'll see what bans come through. It's very interesting because it also makes Energy think about what are they going to actually blind pick on their top side? You kind of have to go with a tank that could be lane swappable. Because mm -hmm. a Jinx lane swapping on you, if you pick a carry top lane here on the side of energy, and then 100 Thieves lane swap on you, and they've got the Jinx lane swap, plus they're the ones with the low econ tank, and you're sitting here with some useless carry that gets zero <laughs> farm, then, then it's really difficult. So I kind of like doing this from a red side, like 100 Thieves are doing, and they're, they're putting a little bit more pressure and more thought on the energy side. Maybe regardless, energy, we're going to go with, uh, you know, a tank-ish type of lower econ type uh, champion for Doka on, on their pick anyway. But this kind of pushes them even further in that direction. And that's also why they ban out the Olaf. They're like, yep. all right, if we're going to have to blind pick and we're going to have to play something more tanky than there. We have Zyra Jungle. Oh, yeah. baby, let's go. Get ready for some early Barons. Get ready for some <laughs> super speed clearing. Faded Ashes has just enabled yep. all of the AP junglers. They're just screaming how strong this item is, even as a component item. And yep. Zyra is one of the best, actually. Uh, you know, Zyra and Morgana are two of these these previously very rarely and mostly solo queue played junglers. Yeah. Uh, that have tremendous speed clears and you get to the point that you can end up later just snaring the jungle camp and then walking away as they burn down and and you can be in position for plays and for counter plays especially really early on while keeping up your super quick clear speeds. Yeah, and as we see, we hear the shouts from the crowd at the Teemo hover. Don't get they, baited, crowd! I don't think that's going to get locked in, but we were talking about what NRG we're going to pick as that <laughs> line. Uh, why is booing Camille? She's interesting. I love Camille. Because um, she's not Teemo. <laughs> the Camille ult on top of a Zyra ult. They have a lot of really cool team fight setups coming out of this 100 Thieves comp. And once again, you're seeing that creativity come out of them. Um, as I was, I was interrupted as I was talking by, by the crowd cheers, but obviously that blind pick coming in is going to be the Cassante. We'll see what Dokla is able to do. But that off of the top side because Sniper's Camille into that should be very strong. And we did you know, start to see at MSI some of these uh, Camille carry picks coming out and, and some of them especially into the Cassante. But since coming back from then, Camille did get some slight nerfs to try and get her back in range. Uh, a little bit less strong than previously with a slight tap uh, to some of those buffs that went into MSI. Still going to be very exciting though. And with so much turret destruction power, you're looking at split push possibilities here at 400 Thieves leaving themselves open with a couple of options. All right, I asked it last time, I'm asking it again. Which side of the draft do you like better? Emily. I mean, uh, honestly, I'm kind of rooting for this, this Irish jungle. I okay. Really, I, I like her setups a lot. Um, I do think if energy is going to perform, it should be on something like this, where especially on the top side, we have something that these guys are really, really comfortable on. And I'm curious to see how involved contracts will be. Um, and I'm also curious to see, again, Zyra Jungle coming out of River. How involved is he going to be? They have the counter pick on the top side in Sniper. Will we see that first solo kill coming out of him? Maybe there's a lot more potential um, for it in this matchup. Um, and I think thus far, honestly, Based on game one and with this composition they have in game two, 100 Thieves, again, have drafted really well around what their team can do and seem mm. to have a good idea of how they want to play these 80 mid uh, AP jungle matchups thus far. Somebody get Laura on the phone quick. Yeah, true. Call her, wake her up. I don't know what's going <laughs> on. She's a huge Zyra fan. <laughs> Let's get it going. Um, you know, El Yoya had one of the games. Aki had one of the games. Yep. Uh, let, let, we'll keep track of it. Obviously, my focus is definitely going to be on the jungle clear speed, as that is one of the biggest strengths. But you do have a big AOE, as you mentioned, Emily. Uh, and it kind of brings a lot more structure to the team fights. We'll see if there's any sort of invade, though, because Nidalee catching a Zyra mid clear oh, could yeah. be devastating. And it's going to depend a lot on the pushing power of our lane. So. 
Everybody cheers. Everybody cheers in the chat for no lane swap. Yeehaw, <laughs> we get regular lanes. Hell we get to yes. fight it out. That's my favorite thing is when we don't lane swap. Aww. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot, one, I forgot the that you're lane like swap the lane swap enjoyer on the desk. Um, but I do think in this case, obviously, again, we talked about how it can help the Jinx, and Jinx was one of those champions initially that was so good in the swap because it mm. gets her into a great position, and also she can hard push, especially if you're grabbing grubs on top side. But it sets up this top lane matchup that we talked about, right? And specifically, Sniper possibly being able to get the better of Dokla in this pick, as we see scrapping in mid lane. Yeah, Quid and Palafox just really going all the way down to 200 HP each, really committing to the trade on these. Both level two now, River clearing through that jungle, as you can see, very, very fast. You already mentioned it, Kobe. He is faster than Anitaly, and not a lot of champions can say that they're faster than Anitaly. <laughs> Yep, all the way up to the top side quadrant here. We'll see which jungler ends up going mid first. Um, you know, oftentimes too, Nidalees will come by and just give you a heal, and that can equally piss off the enemy mid laner, <laughs> especially if you're trading this low. Uh, kind of the drive-by heals coming through, but Contracts looks like he wants more than a heal here. See if he can, uh, if, Qu uh, if Quid was gonna get close to his side of the brush, you know, any any kind of stray spear always helps, but here's another look at it. Uh, the Zyra clears are insane. It's one of the nuts. big bonuses right over the Krug wall mm -hmm. because you get to leave those little plants behind. It's one of the biggest, best feeling things. It's just killing camps and then just walking away while it's fin being finished off by your plants. Yeah, and they will see River invading here, but I'm not sure what Contracts is gonna be able to do about it as we see him harassing and they have pressure from mid. I love the way Zyra just swag walks at you too. Like yeah. you can't do oh, yeah. anything about it. She's just completely on a mission. He knows, queen of the jungle. <laughs> This is not Nidalee's part of the jungle anymore. River invading there. He's not in time to steal the blue buff, of course, but he does have control over this enemy Gromp now instead. Going to turn his attention back up into the top side river, looking towards that Scuttle Crab or a potential 2v2 here in the mid lane. Contract's coming around from behind. We'll look for Quid, but it's hard to really make this work out super well considering there's no CC on either the mid laner or the jungler for energy. And with Quid being Tristana, that gank is hard to make it work. Yeah, it's hard to make it work, but it does end up resetting this wave a bit for Palafox, um, and he'll be able to push in, and now Contracts is going to see what he can get done on the bot side of the map. This is looking so sad for Contracts. Yeah. He already, by spending so much time mid, got even further than normal behind Isaira, and River took advantage of it, walking into his jungle, counter-jungling him, and then he was on that ward when he went bottom side, so mm -hmm. not only was their bottom lane getting pushed in, but he was on Vision, wasting even more time as a Nidalee. And even though he's like one camp or one even small monster uh, kill away from level four, you cannot afford to get behind a Zyra like this. Uh, River's already almost all the way to level five. And guess what? Already did a full reset for my favorite item. He's full build. Faded, Faded ashes. ashes. Faded ashes. Oh, there baby. Zyra can just throw down a couple of skills, walk away from the camps as they burn on down, and then try and walk into your jungle and do the same thing. I remember when I saw Faded Ashes in the patch notes, I was like, there's no way this goes live. And then it went live and it got Hotfix nerfed in what, like three hours or something? <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah. this is a really powerful item, Hotfix man. nerfed and still, and still giga great. for jungle. <laughs> yeah, still absolutely great. Uh, as we see Kuhi now rotating mid. Yeah. <laughs> Energy really trying Quid, to. Quid is like, uh, yes, hello. Quid. Are you lining up for signatures after my quadra kill Baron steal last game? <laughs> Wait in line. Me. Wait in line, Energy <laughs> members. Well, it is Father's Day, and Quid was uh, father of energy <laughs> oh. in the previous game. I'll go ahead and put it that way. As who he tries to fall back here, just throws up the shield to block any follow-up there from Meech's Zap. Quid, level six, Palafox still only level five. Honestly, River's about to hit level six here very soon as well on the Zyra, clearing out those Krugs yet again. A couple more auto attacks over the wall. Bye-bye, little Krug babies. <laughs> this Zyra means business. Yeah, he even sticks around for the little baby ones. There's good golden <laughs> nose, okay? Uh, some people are in the habit of, uh, you know, just walking away from those, not... It's a bad habit. Not respecting them. Yeah, bad those, habit. There's some good value in those mini Krugs. Meanwhile, Huhi doing his best to fight the Vision War, but it's 
pretty dangerous for him, and he's taken a lot. Oh, man. Immediately half HP on who he has. Quid is ready to help out with the fight. Who he down to 200. Sniper's coming in now as well, but he does not close the gap fast enough to lock anybody down with a Hextech Ultimatum or the hook shot. So 100 Thieves, despite the fact that they don't get any kills there, they are going to earn themselves control over the topside river and control over the grubs. Yeah, it's the communication. You can see what's kind of going on there with, with the comms with Dokla coming down first, but in the early game especially, so much... Uh, you know what, Matt? Well, level six already for River off that off that grub too. You better be careful, Dokla. Yeah, this dude. This Sarah is not playing business. around. But it matters so much when you get the early health leads in these trades. You, you saw how much damage who he was taking fighting for the control ward. Even though Dokla gets there first, you have to leave too much damage soaked. Uh, tanking those plants from Zyra as now he wants another pass. Yeah, who he looking to lock this guy down, but the flash over the wall from River. He knows that Braum has to have help nearby as Quid jumps in after Palafox, but not gonna get a whole lot more from that. Who he goes for the exhaust. Quid's gonna be your target. Flashes back away. River does not land the lockdown. So 100 Thieves, they get out, but it does cost two flashes for both River and Quid. Yes, a fairly bold choice by Quid, as he had perfect information <laughs> on where, who he was. And he's like, you know what? I've got time. I'll go for a quick little trade. Uh, exhaust for Flash is uh, definitely not good for Quid, but uh, at least they don't die quite yet. Yeah, and we'll see if energy are actually able to capitalize on it off of this reset because again that's going to be the big, big thing for me right energy have been looking for these plays early out on the map um and have kind of been stymied by 100 thieves as Jokla comes in to check out a little glance to river yeah he's like uh, how's the farming going yeah. uh he learns that the farming is going exceptionally well <laughs> exceptionally fast look, yeah look at just look at these plants rip through i'm telling you it's, it's kind of a uh, tough pill to swallow for like older junglers that that see when all these like modifiers keep getting increased and uh uh, a lot of jungle. Are you, are you telling Ape? me you hate Zyra Jungle, Koki? Uh, no, I'm not. You're not a Zyra Jungle I'm not explicit Zyra Jungle. I'm not explicitly telling you that. <laughs> but but uh, the, I'm reading between the, the, lines. the trend of super fast clear speed, uh, especially AP ones like Zyra and Morgana and mm -hmm. stuff, uh, you know, getting in there. It does, it adds variety, okay? So I'm fine now with it while it is still very unique. You know, this is yeah. not like a super common pick. Uh, obviously, it's uh, fairly rare still, so um, still I'm still good with it. Okay. Okay. We're still right. now. All For right. now, we're chill. Yeah, we'll see. Everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously though, when's the last time you saw Nidalee 25, almost 30 farm behind in the jungle? Like yeah. that's. I mean, so that remember your choices, especially early on, do snowball for jungle when you're <laughs> waiting around mid lane for, you know, two passes out of Tristana and get very little value out of your time waiting there, it's quite costly. And and the the cost compounds with the respawns there for jungle camps and River being able to just burn everything down. Yeah, and Kubi, you kind of talked about like what happens with this Nidalee jungle if they do, if it does fall behind, mm. right? And like, how do NRG end up playing around that? Because again, they've been looking for these plays, but they haven't been able to capitalize thus far, even on things like for example, uh, Quid's Flash being down. Obviously, he's Trist, so he still has a built-in escape from the jump. Um, but it's 100 Thieves have still been able to come out ahead on the map overall, getting the Grubs and now first Drake off of their pressure. And it's actually really interesting. You know, it's deeper than like, oh, this champion, um, you know, is super OP now, or like yeah. just faded Ashes and stuff. You know, a lot of things brought us to this point where we're seeing so many of these AP jungle speed clears. Uh, one of them, of course, as contracts is going to get caught. Yeah, Ayla immediately <laughs> ready to wombo combo. This guy, the strangle thorns aren't even required. The super mega death rocket from top lane gets Meech paid. Yeah, nice little handoff here. Meech, would you like some extra gold? <laughs> sure. It is served up on a silver platter. Nice ultimate there to go collect it. But some of the things that brought us here are not only some of the changes to the champion, some of the changes to the item, items, but also the buff in experience for jungle camps mm -hmm. uh, really did reward this playstyle also. And so that's why we're seeing all this knock-on effect of so many AP jungle clear speeds paired with all of these different AD options. The Tristan of the Corky, which we have now, already seeing the Ezreal as well. 
um, you know, Jace getting some bans, so lots of the different AD options that you want to pair with power clearing junglers. We also saw Karthus yesterday mm -hmm. as far as another AP option. We haven't seen the brand this season, although obviously that is also a super popular one there for burning down jungle and playing into this kind of style, but AD mids and AP clearing jungles yep. is going to be something very prominent. Yes, as we see, I'm curious to see what 100 Thieves are now setting up on this bot side with Meech pushing in. Zyra's also pretty good for setting up some of these dives, especially with the plan. So we'll see if Meech is able to get this wave in, and then they're probably going to go for the dive. Yep, they already knocked off the bone pla plating from Dokla. Meanwhile, up here on the top side could also be a move onto Sniper, but it looks like FBI and Huhi just going to be working on plates now as 100 Thieves just force Dokla away from the bottom lane Tier 1 turret. It's going to be Energy committing the same amount of manpower up here to the top side Tier 1 as Dokla joins up with his own bottom lane, but they're losing the race. It's River and Meech doing so much damage to this thing down here in bot side. Looks like they should be able to grab it themselves. Yep, top lane will not be taken first, and that is first turret over to 100 Thieves. And it's an important race now, too, yep. on this patch. We're on live patch with the 300 first flood tower uh, bonus gold. So they doubled it from the 150 previously in an attempt to deal with lane swaps. And so uh, quite nice uh, bonus now for winning that race. Oh. Hello, Death Rocket. Nice. Interrupting the Not recall the there. Right on the board. Quid has to disengage from contracts, and who he tries to get back underneath the tier one turret, but they force his flash as well. You could see the projectile in the air still followed him, stunned him up from the stacks of Winter's Bites. So if he didn't flash there, highly likely he could have been killed. Yeah, and talking about going back to what Kobe was talking about a bit, we'll see if they're gonna. Anything's gonna happen. Um, the other big thing is that they're funneling a lot of this into Meech, right? Like Jinx is. Mm -hmm. The one of their hyper carries. I mean, she is the hyper carry on this team. Um, and 100 Thieves are doing a really good job of recognizing. Obviously, he got the, the little tap finisher uh, on the first blood, but also then being able to funnel all of that gold on the bot side into Meech specifically should pay off really well, as Dokla might be in trouble. Meech flashing away, does not want to get caught by Dokla here. The Stranglethorns looking to start this fight off right for 100 Thieves. FBI's here on the front line. Energy's got all five men ready to rumble. Solar Flare doesn't find a stun on anybody. Sniper goes in for the Hextech ultimatum, and it's FBI barely staying alive, but Jinx just got excited, and the Rockets are flying. Quid's over the wall. Contracts wants to chase him, but he should have just gone home. More rockets, more damage, more kills for 100 Thieves. Meech is popping off. They go for him, they get his flash, but they pay for it with multiple lives. And you see the setup for this Jinx in this Kia replay as we see Meech is out here, lays out the trap, doesn't see Dokla, NRG think they might be able to go in on this fight, but Meech is able to flash out, and then the Stranglethorns sets up such huge zoning potential. It's also Ayla's ult that comes out across here from the Leona, and then Sniper joining in. You really see how this Camille works so well with the rest of the comp, and then Jinx firing on the back line. Yeah, as soon as Dokla popped out of that brush, River is making the call. You know what? This is not legal. <laughs> I am turning this around. Everyone teleport in right now. You saw the first teleport from Quid. The second teleport comes in from Sniper. Everybody arrives and they chase him down. This is a 5-0 start for 100 Thieves in game number two. They are looking to make this uh, even stronger than a repeat. I mean, last, last split, taking down uh, energy at the end of the year yep. and then in playoffs as well. Um, you know, that one went the full five games. This one looking like they will not need the entire series. Man, 100 Thieves is looking good in game number two. And okay, if you're energy, what's the bandage? How do we stop this bleeding? Because it's starting to feel real, real bad. Oof, it's tough. I mean, you kind of have to get this Quirky in. He's still going to do a lot of damage and get Hooky in a position to where he can soak up some of the damage coming out of the Trist and the Jinx. Okay. Obviously, trying to use your poke also, being able to come out potentially from the Nidalee and the Quirky um, to make a pick as we see them setting up for a pick on the Sniper potentially. Yeah, Sniper's going to get chased down by four members of energy. 
The Camille is the target. Camille's normally pretty mobile, but 4v1, pretty hard to get away. So Sniper ends up getting caught. But is it really that much of a catch when it's traded for two turrets in the mid lane? Ah, uh, the sacrificial top laner, a tale as old as time. The extra um, camp. We <laughs> we saw some of this yesterday. We even yeah. saw this in the previous game where 100 Thieves were just blasting them and then uh, they, they did get one kill onto Sniper chasing him down, but um, not going to slow 100 Thieves down at all as on the other side of the map, they even have higher priorities. So they're going to go for the reset into Dragon. Uh, maybe River just takes care of the dragon himself since energy also have very little vision though They did sneak a ward in the back of the dragon pit. So Good call here for River not to rush starting off the dragon There is one in there wait for the resets for the rest of the team a little bit for them to come back out Looks like contracts isn't even heading over that way though. So not even looking for the possibility of the steal Yeah, we'll see if 100 Thieves are able to respond to this. Again, that's such a great, that entire run of play, right? Like you talked, you asked me, Clayton, like how did they get back into it? Well, they try to make a pick, but then 100 Thieves are in such a better spot on the map that they immediately recognize, okay, you know what? Sniper, you're dead in the side lane. We're going to push mid, get two turrets, rotate bot, get that turret as well, because Triss was already set up on the bot side. They lock in their second Drake. Uh, as I'm speaking, and they just have incredible map control and also some really nice map movements coming out of 100 Thieves. 100 Thieves is a team that has, has been really fun for, for people to root for mm -hmm. with, with a lot of the signings that they got, you know, um, Sniper, Meech, obviously, uh, a, lot of, a lot of hype behind them as well as being super young. But uh, as soon as they got River too, it just, this team just became so explosive. Yeah. Um, especially with how fun some of the drafts have been with mm -hmm. this team. It's definitely been been gaining a lot of steam throughout spring. It was pro. It was probably the regular season story that was Absolutely. that was the most unexpected and the most fun to watch. The kind of ascent of this team did fall off a little bit in playoffs, uh, but it looks like in summer here they're trying to pick right back up where they left off. Sniper, the recipient of some more pressure. Yeah, but he immediately turns it right back. He wants to aim for contracts. Quid's ready to reinforce them. Contracts barely starts to get away, but he still falls. 100 Thieves are making this 2v3 look pretty good as Sniper gets himself back away underneath the turret. Dokla's all out, but he can't go back in. Palafox trying to provide some covering fire back over the wall. Sniper still looking to see if maybe he can get a little bit more because Ayla's coming down to join the party. And I don't think Palafox wants to stick around. He should have called the Uber. He should have gone home. And it looks like he just <laughs> might get away. They let him. 100 Thieves, what in the hell are you doing? <laughs> there we go. Ayla gets it. Uh, and that entire time, I was wondering if they were going to end up going and pushing in mid as well onto the inhibitor turret. But really nice response from Quid, recognizing, like, okay, we can take this fight. Uh, with our, our Tourist and our Camille able to hold off. And again, NRG have so few options now, <laughs> um, especially yeah. with how far ahead. Like, Trist comes in immediately. Sniper's like, I'm diving right onto Contract. Gets the damage out. Contract pops. Yeah. You love to see it. Quit teleporting in. Get your hands away <laughs> from my rookie solo later here, <laughs> defending his... Solo lane brethren in Sniper teleports in. They call in the reinforcements, uh, and then they have a little fun with it. We said this team's yeah. a fun team to watch. They are super fun. And I was going to point out, they cut the replay a little short, but I was going to point out they were actually still pushing down mid here uh, until Ayla ended up rotating around on the back of that fight as well, recognizing that he could get the flank in as Leona. And Ayla making that play happen. He goes home afterwards. He purchases his first big non-support item. It's a Warmox. Let's if, go! If Nidalee didn't already feel turbo useless this game, Ayla now just stands in front of every spear at zero consequence. Warmogs right now is very good. They increased the flat health to 1,000. So it's pretty good for a lot of uh, junglers that scale off health. <clears throat> Skarner, <clears throat> Satwani, <clears throat> as well as <laughs> some support champions. Uh, you know, Leona does get resistances elsewhere too, so it always pairs really nicely. The only drawback is is that if, is if you have too much health and not enough resistances, then you can still be kind of squishy to some of the percent health 
damage that is in the game as we get a little bit dicey at the Ooh. tower. Palafox jumping in there, trying to find the angle on River, but it ain't gonna work out, because here comes Quid. He's on a rampage, and 100 Thieves brought the whole crew up to top lane for another heist. They pick up the enemy mid laner. The rest of energy doesn't have anything left to fight with. Who he lived with 10 HP, had to use both summoner spells. 100 Thieves has total control over this second game. You can say that again. Emphasis on 100 the Thieves has total control over this <laughs> second game. Emphasis on the total <laughs> part of that control. Yeah. Uh, let's paint a picture from last game. Uh, you know, double 80 carries, both yep. of them super fed. Neither Quid nor Meech Oof. has died yet, and Quid wants another. Yeah, Cassante is Cassante, but even he's not going to Cassante that. He's just got to go home. Bye bye, buddy. Yeah, and we'll see. I mean, this is, again, every time the NRG try to make a play, as we see, Contracts might get collapsed on here next. Contracts thinks he might have found Sniper, but I don't think that's the way it's gonna go. Meech needs one more rocket, and Contracts is down for the fourth time. Who he's gonna join him, and it just feels like energy are all out of options. Yeah, anywhere they try to go on the map, 100 Thieves have coverage, they have vision coverage, they're able to collapse in. This should be a pretty easy Baron setup and take from them with Contract dead and Kuki not up for another nine seconds. I, NRG aren't even gonna be done with it. Man, somebody get Courage on the phone. He's gonna be popping off right I'm now sure. for how good hit this team is playing. 100 Thieves are looking clean here in their debut series for Summer. That's a 22 minute Baron. Yeah, and as we talk about, I mean, they're gonna get the consolation prize NRG of this Drake, but the big thing we were wondering about setting up into this matchup, the revenge match between NRG and 100 Thieves, where are these two teams at? 100 Thieves look to be picking right back off, not on their playoff performance, but their regular season performance, looking incredibly cohesive and locking in back-to-back -back drafts that, again, are super creative, meta, and make the most of the players on this team. And now they are both rich and buffed by Baron, so they yeah. should have an easy time marching towards the base here. 4-1 split push, Tristana on bottom lane, rest of the team hovering around mid, just collect the extra wave, wait for Tristana to clear out the bottom side yep. one, and then lay siege to the energy base. River just keeps zoning everybody away with the power of this Zyra and all these plants at bottom lane turret, man. You're up against Jinx and Tristana. Dokla's about to learn the Ooh. same lesson. Meech goes on a rampage. It's a 5v4 for 100 Thieves. That excitement, that attack speed just makes Meech into a turret of his own. As the mid lane inhibitor is their next target, bot lane inhibitor already falling down. Meech at half HP, but it ain't gonna matter. Super Mega Death Rocket keeps energy zoned away. First Nexus turret's gone. Meech has been excited since they broke into the maze, and he ain't gonna be stopping anytime soon. That second Nexus turret is about to fall. FBI going into the back, but he won't find anything. Who he's your next target? And it's just too easy for 100 Thieves. They'll 2-0 energy to kick off Summer. Cleanest performance thus far that we've seen in these best of threes in the LCS. 100 Thieves starting their regular summer season, just where they picked off from their regular spring season. Incredible performances coming out of them, especially in these double AD carry comps. We're looking at Quid and Meech, I thought had really, really strong performances. Mid lane Ezreal and jungle Zyra. Yeah, buddy. The title yep. of this series, that's all you need to know. That and 100 Thieves clapped them. Yeah, I'm curious to see, like, again, because Quid came from Gen G, had Pays playing that Ezreal last night. I love the connection between the two there. I want with the to Gen believe, I want to believe that, that he had not played Ezreal uh, mid either. He had just seen and that. And just like, like oh, <laughs> I'm going to do it. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Might as well. Let's go. I mean, uh, just it worked such, out. Yeah, such a fun, fun series and fun team. And again, like really clean 2-0 from them, making the most of what we saw, the strength of this team in spring. Yeah. River and Quid working together beautifully. You already talked about it a little bit after game number one, but the bot lane gap just felt huge. Like, FBI and Huhi, I didn't feel like we really got to see a whole lot out of them 
in this series, whereas Meech and Ayla were just lining them up and knocking them down. River on the Zyra, just again, I have not seen a Nidalee get terrorized to that degree <laughs> in such a long time. This Zyra, like, I've seen so many games where people lock in Nidalee, and I'm like, yeah, I don't feel like Nidalee did a lot here. Just play Zyra. <laughs> She's better Nidalee now. We're joining Jack and Sniper on stage for an interview. Let's go, boys. Thanks, Flowers. Sniper, congratulations on the win. How does it feel winning your first, you know, best of three in the LCS regular season? It feels great, honestly. I'm really glad we're finally playing best out of threes. And, I mean, I didn't really need to do much, to be honest, in, all, in two of these games. But, yeah, it felt amazing. How did it feel coming back during the off season and kind of grinding again to get through another regular season? Because you guys were so surprisingly good in spring, had some disappointment in playoffs. What was the motivation and process like to get back here? Uh, to be honest, I'm still kind of trying to like, I'm still trying to figure out just like uh, how to get back in the rhythm, I guess, of just playing on stage, playing scrims and stuff. Uh, but I mean, it feels amazing. I've just been playing a lot of solo queue scrims, still learning a lot. And thanks to my teammates, we won these two games today. Which is, yeah. How long have you been back scrimming? Sorry? How long have you been back scrimming? Uh, we've been scrimming for about a month now, yeah. yeah nice. About a month. And did, with playing best of threes, did you feel any different energy in game one knowing that you're going to have an extra game if something goes wrong? Was there any mental thing that it unlocked for you? Uh, not necessarily, to be honest. I just came into the series just playing like how I normally play, and it turned out well, you know, just like any other game. Yeah, I mean, honestly, your team as a whole crushed. You guys looked absolutely amazing. How do you feel going up into the next week against Dignitas? Uh, I'm feeling pretty confident as of right now, but anything can happen. Um, but knowing my teammates and myself, I think we're gonna we're gonna two zero them very easily. Yeah, we're gonna destroy them. Yeah. All right. Thanks for the time, sniper. Congratulations on the win, and we'll we'll see you next week. We're Thank gonna you. toss a break. Shop fire bill and the mortals up next. See you. Bye. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Okay. They have to go for summer. They were staying before. Oh, okay. Can be here then. Yeah, we need to finish up. Oh, yeah. Wait a little bit. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, he's here, I think. He's here, he's here, he's here. We have TP. Okay. Let's, let's fight. I can, I can come, come, come close, guys. Let's fight. Look, 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 look. I'm keeping, I'm keeping. Go fight. I TP as well. Go fight, go fight. You can just stand it, just stand it. I can go. Look, look, look. Because I'm picking off. Because I'm picking off. We can die, we can die. Just die. Just die, 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 die. Don't play. Leave the block. Leave the block. I'm gonna look wrong, I'm gonna look wrong. Yeah, some of you are playing high from nowhere. Uh, can you take top tower? Yeah, yeah, I think it. Dude, why'd you put your new rig in the basement? Didn't you hear? Bill's a good gillionaire now. Basically, my new connection is so strong I can game anywhere. Check it out. We've got Gamer Rocker, Gamer Floaty, Gamer Couch. Whoa. It's got wheels. Gamer Bench, Gamer Throne, and Gamer Mower. What's that? It's hard to game while walking downstairs. I get it. That's smart. Live like a gagillionaire with low latency everywhere. AT&T Fiber with all five. Red Bull gives you wings. I've got the Samsung 990 Pro Series. Shall we get started then? The speed exceeds all expectations. Reading speeds are 40% quicker than before, and writing speeds are 55% faster. Through the in-house controller, the per watt performance has improved up to 50%. The 990 Pro's nickel coating controller for its smart thermal solution technology controls you. Playing computer games? Obviously the best. Hello, I am here with Victorious 100 Thieves support, Ayla, after a really clean 2-0 victory. So first of all, picking up not where you guys left off in playoffs, but where you left off in regular season, how did you prepare for this split? I think going into this split, everyone knew we had to focus on. I think we were pretty lax in like our screen culture and how we approached practice during split one and Everyone clearly thought that it wasn't like we weren't trying hard enough or like we weren't 
being critical of our mistakes. So this split, we really focused up. Our standards are much higher and like every time someone messes up or we, we just randomly die, we're always getting called out for it and our coaches are, coaches are keeping us in check. So we're a lot more driven this split. Golden Glue is now a taskmaster. Yeah, I mean, he's keeping us in check, him and Sam. Um, and then I did want to talk to you briefly about Engage Supports. They're back. Warmogs is back. Uh, how does it feel to now be that primary Engage force, which is where I think you've really shown in the past throughout your career? Yeah, I mean, it's nice. I like to play both types of styles, but I think right now with the meta being how it is, I mean, it's nice to have a lot of control. I mean, you saw in the series, but it's it's really easy when you know how to play the game for for me to like find the right angle to engage and I think our team is really good at following up so I mean it's nice I can't complain. And then looking at these compositions were these something specifically you prepared for NRG or just making the most of the current meta? Uh, I mean we don't really look at energy like specifically we're just trying to get better every day so I don't think we've prepared anything for them we just made sure we were ready. All right, well, thank you so much for taking the time to join me. You looked great, uh, regardless of whether you specifically prepared for them or not, looking great in this meta. Congratulations, and we'll toss it back to the lounge on the other side.